two natures of everything. When we look at heaven, we were always, you know, we've been saying for the last several years, heaven's not that physical place, but heaven is that um, that presence and understanding of God. If, if we're in the presence of God and, and God is, we're made in the image and likeness of him, and we understand we're Elohim, that new heaven and, and new earth, to me, to use the example of really, we were at the, when we get to that point, we are at the ultimate beginning. Like we've gotten back to the beginning. You understand at the core who you are. And from that new heaven, new earth, we're talking about now, everything that we create from that point going forward is based on a, a, a clear and decisive understanding of who we are. And that new heaven, a new earth, you're, you're at the ultimate state of beginning because you got an awareness, okay? You're at your highest, highest understanding of who Charles is as Elohim. It's, um, it's almost like, yeah, you're, we're at the top of or at the height of our understanding, but at the same time, you're at the beginning. So it's kind of like a, a reconstruction of, um, um, let me give an example of, you know, you know, a person can build a house, and they can they can build that house, and they're living in a house, and they're functioning in that house. But then you, you storms come, and it blows that house, it tears that house apart. But then you understand once that house is torn apart and everything's down at the beginning and at the rubble, your mind that knowledge you had about building a house, you know now how to really build this thing back bigger, stronger, and faster. You've got the right foundation now that, you, you know, you're at that point. It's not so much the physical building that you're going to rebuild, but it's that knowledge and that wisdom and understanding you have about how to build that house again going forward. That's your new heaven, new earth. So, yeah, you may have gone through the storm and, and all those things have just kind of ripped you apart to understand who you are. But now you're able to, to walk in this thing again with a different kind of balance, with a different kind of understanding that it's, it's going to be built on, on the right foundation, the right understanding, the right technique, all the things that you learned over the years in that old house that was built, that was kind of ripped apart to get back to the beginning of it. You tore that to the foundation. Now you're able to kind of build that back up with a new understanding and an even better idea of what's going to withstand the storm, what's going to withstand all the, the things that caused that first house to, to be fall, you know, be torn apart. Is that, that I hope that's a good example of it. But you, yeah, I understand it a whole uh, lot better. Did you yeah, talk about the uh, Right, Rip. Good. Uh, you go ahead. I put. I said this. <clears throat> yeah. Um. St. I was going to say that. Uh, I was going to say that when we talk about the new heaven and new earth, we always we also talk about oh, memory because it it deals with um. The, the, it's not something uh new in the sense of it never been there. I think Richard touched on that a couple. However, it is uh, fresh to us because it's been very deep in our memory. So it's talking about a consciousness that's already present that we become aware of. And that consciousness of earth coupled with the consciousness of um, heaven or enlightenment is what makes us human. Because we're talking about a consciousness that we, we need in order to survive in this earth as humans, but also a consciousness that we need in order for us to be creative for the purpose of surviving and keeping balance in the earth. I hope that's um, not confusing. I'm a confusing. Thank you. No, Pastor, that's not. Uh, 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 George, you were getting ready to make a comment too. 
Yeah, I was, you know, just going to you know, piggyback in terms of what we had talked about um, Sunday. And I think that I expressed, you know, just going through an experience that made me truly appreciate, you know, who I am. Because after I've gone through that exhaustive experience, I really just meditate on it, on who I am, Elohim. And that just kind of just gave me a, a, a refreshing or, you know, as Pastor just mentioned, not uh, renew, but a, a renewable life, to, you know, experience in terms of just being able to rest at that particular point. And I felt, you know, again, again, like brand new in a sense where all that I thought that was a struggle, all that I thought that was heaviness became light again because I was able to be in that I am consciousness of who I truly am, my true self. And so, you know, it was just, again, that, that opportunity just to be still and, and to realize that renewable life energy, you know, that you're able to manifest in terms of just um, looking for another uh, opportunity to be able to serve. Um, I don't know if that resonates, but it's like, again, you know, going through, you know, the ninth inning or you're going into overtime and you think that, you know, it's all uh, over, but, you know, you get that second win or third win or whatever, that energy that you need. But it's like, again, appreciating uh, how to tap into that after you're going through a, a long day. But more importantly, that renewable life energy. I don't know if that resonates, but I think that I saw the positive of that experience not being a negative but being optimistic to know that i can get back into that resting place in terms of being renewed if that makes sense no you know? you, no it does i mean like and, and you always kind of bring it home for me too because uh it's you know when we think about it, it's such a creative we talk about the creative aspect of it and and um and how the a sense you know links the thing creatively and when you talk, you know, and we were talking a couple of weeks ago about just uh, how people recover and, you know, and we always look at uh, someone who's recovering in a negative connotation, but really, you know, I equated that recovery to growth. And, and there's a reason why some people are more creative than others when it comes to like expression through writing, through art. Through uh, through music, uh, you know, they, you know, sometimes they they're so tapped into that side of themselves that they may be a different sort of balance. But for instance, like you know, we talk about Hollywood movies all the time. When Rev was talking earlier about uh, explaining the new heaven and new earth, I think we're all in this call old enough to remember. If you haven't seen the that Last Dragon, how that guy was. And that's what I was thinking about in my head. I, you know, sometimes I create it because I, I wonder how these people come up with storylines and and how he was in search of the the last dragon, last dragon, and everyone laughed at how he went about his search. And when it finally dawned on him, he had been going all around the world looking for this thing, and it was right there inside of him. It just took the memories and the thoughts being aligned and. And, and massaged and, and, and influenced from an internal standpoint when he could just sit down and go into a place and he realized that, oh, God, everything that I'm looking for, that source, it's me. It's already me. And so when we look at that new heaven or new earth, it's kind of also a, a birth. It's a, it's a birth of something that's, that's inside of us. And you need both of those uh those two sides to, to come together, the feminine and the masculine to come together to, to birth something with, within us that's that's gonna come out and that's that 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 new that new mindset, the new mentality, that new nature that hey, this has always been in me. I just needed to figure out a way how to create it and to bring it to life. And now this it's gonna be walking and operating from just a new source of energy, a new source of, of input, influx, that now that whatever I'm producing from that point on, because of the state of mind that I'm producing it from, 
it's going to be a more righteous production because of all the things that I've been through and, and understand and how I'm cultivating it. And, and, and you've got that feminine aspect and the birth of this child within ourselves of just a new mindset. Now I see a new heaven, a new earth. It's a, it's a birth of just a higher level of consciousness. And then we're able to function in this higher level of consciousness now. And then everything that we create or bring forward from that standpoint is all going to be based on a new heaven, a new earth, um, in how we see it. Because we, uh, you know, I'm not the best writer. And, um, you know, uh, Greg may be a better, he may be a better poet than me. And, but if I read enough of his poems, I may not be uh, at the level he is as far as writing poems, but it gives me a certain mindset, a certain, a certain energy that I can pull from, and I can, I, can, I can structure that poem a lot better than never having been exposed to some of his writings or teachings. It's just, you know, we develop each at our own pace and who we are is already there. But it's just that development, that understanding of how to pull it out of us. You know, that's what we talked about, why we need each other. Because that helps pull out the best of us. It helps us, whether it be from a motivation, whether it be from a, I never thought like that standpoint, you know, perspective. You need that. We need that perspective. And, and the world kind of taps into it. You can see it from a, manifest itself from a natural standpoint. It's sort of like, you know, we're talking about the left side of the brain, the heart and the creativity. We see some of those evidence of that being brought forward. And that's the balance that, um, that Barbara talked about from the earth standpoint, not necessarily just the dust, but just earth consciousness, spiritual consciousness that we talk about putting these things together and how do we balance that? How do we, um, you know, walk in humanity but at the same time understand we're Elohim. Um, I, I wanted to check something. I, yesterday, I think it was yesterday anyway, I made the statement that if you don't create, you're not a creator. And what I, what I meant by that is if we go through life uh, like a daisically, um, not really having any direction, waiting for everything to come to us, uh, then we are creating nothing. Uh, for example, uh, the um, the religious things that we have been taught brought nothing new to us. Uh, we were actually stagnant when it came to being uh, creative. We, but there was nothing at all that we uh, created, and that is the reason uh, that it became, I, I'm sorry, that is the reason uh, that uh, we began to question it, because every year of our lives, we heard the same thing over and over and over again, and still is hearing the same thing if we are in those settings. Now, so what do I mean? How do we create? Um First of all, in order for us uh, to uh, be creators, we must create a new attitude in us. We must create a desire in us uh, to embrace whatever we are shown from our creator. Uh, we, we must uh, create not only the desire, but we must also create the space within us uh, by ex by, by uh, re what exciting the um, religious antics that we have adopted, we must create the space for for loving kindness because truly religion doesn't really teach us what loving kindness is. And when we talk about uh, being creators, we also must embrace something else, and that something else that we must embrace is that there is no such thing as a miracle and there is no such thing as being supernatural. Um, when we know who we are, what other people call miracles is an everyday thing for us. 
uh, what other people see as being supernatural is normality for us. It's not, it's not something that we, that we, um, that we get all, uh, what, get in the uproar about. And, and, and I want everybody to know that we brought this thing into being. That's not it at all. It, it, being Elohim is an everyday life venture. Being Elohim is, is, is a venture in our lives uh, that brings so much uh, spiritual normality unto others or attracted to us. And they began to learn uh, how to be created, not by us teaching them verbally, but by the actions and the experiences that they see that we are having. And also by the energy that we exude uh, by what we, because of what we embrace uh, from our creator. Are there any questions or comments about that? Does that make sense to you guys? No, it does. I mean, like, when, I mean, you know, all the years we talked, you know, I remember you all saying, you know, you talked about one of the things you did was like you, uh, you got rid of auxiliaries, you got rid of different things. And, um, and I just think back to early on this lesson, we talked about things that get us stuck. And the reason we uh, we didn't have any growth because we were in a place of being stuck. And when you're stuck, you're at a point where you can't manage both worlds, you can't manage both natures. And so a lot of the things you described were were periods in our life where we were stuck and um and you 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 can't move beyond a certain point because you aren't able to create because you can't really bring anything into existence because we you're not at a place where you can create and that's that's i mean that's what creating is we're bringing something into existence and and if we look back at all the things that the church and religion has has um has given you know we misused emotion for example and we took emotion and emotional outbreaks as growth when the reality is the emotions were unchecked and, and, and not regulated and those are the things that held us back from growth because we suppress and we're denying the identity and therefore we're not able to tap into or we're not able to understand or walk with our eighth sense because we were unable to check our emotions. And so these are some of the things that will always get us stuck. And if we're unable to not even regulate, but just um, to discipline, and it goes back to that discipline that we talked about several weeks ago, because you've got to have that discipline in ourselves to, to sort of self-regulate and to keep the emotional things in check when they need to be so that we can create because you can't create and be undisciplined. So, we, you know, we talk about if that happens, it goes back to living in dysfunction. And so you, you, you're either going to create functionally or you're going to create dysfunction. It's, it's, uh, it's one or the other. And, and just being able to, to regulate, and understand what we're bringing into existence needs to be created under a certain discipline as well. Then, then, then what you said, I mean, this makes sense because if we're if we're allowed to create from the earthly concept and not from internally, when we're creating just based on rea- responding and reacting, then we're creating a lot of dysfunction, and those are the things right. that all lead to us getting stuck. Well, as when you said that, um, when you when you made mention of um, getting rid of the auxiliaries, something dawned on me. Um, getting rid of the auxiliaries created the space for us to become aware of who we are, because all of those auxiliaries were distractions, and as long as they are intact, we uh, that would be there will be continuous distractions. I did not realize at the time, of course. However, I do see it very clearly now uh, that there was a huge amount of space uh, that was uh, created when we removed ourselves from the auxiliaries 
who removed ourselves from associational function, who removed ourselves from all of those religious uh, things uh, that we were involved in, that gave us the space to move in, that gave us the space uh, to, to become comfortable with what we were becoming aware of. Thank you. Yeah, and, and also, Pastor, you know, and ST and everyone, you know, I think there was a saying that talked about, um, let us just erase the tape in terms of just what we were, you know, brought up in church in terms of the, you know, the doctrines or all of the things that, you know, were stuck in our, you know, in our minds in terms of, you know, what being spiritual, what being church is. And I, you know, truly have come to the point, you know, where Pastor, you have mentioned, you know, in terms of just, just do it. And you just made that statement, just do it. And I think the thing for me was, okay, you know, he said, just do it, just be. And I think that over the period of time, you know, I'm beginning to know how to tap into the power of who I am as Elohim. And I think that there's just creative uh, intelligences or words that have been spoken, you know, through our time of being in, you know, a communion with one another in that way where we can appreciate the words that we're hearing. So, you know, ST, when you talk about um, the communication arts in terms of uh, language or in terms of, um, again, the physical or even the creative, you know, I, I think that when you tap into that word of truth, you know, that's just resonate with me so much more now because creating that truth is being aware that we're Elohim and now seeing the manifestations of the creative words that come out of that truth by knowing. And so I think that over a period of time, we've heard truth. We've heard balance. You know what I mean? We, we heard, uh, you know, those words that resonate with us in terms of our true self. And so when you meditate on that, I think the revelation can become more evident in terms of now discovering the power of who we really are. So again, it's just, you know, awesome just to do it. But there was a time that I think we, you know, we still struggle. We may be stuck, but the whole point of emphasis that I'm just trying to make is just do it. Just do what? You know, how do I do it? And I think that the more that we, you know, speak the words, the more that we know the words, the more that we move away from what we were stuck in, I think we are now, you know, being able to walk in the newness of life and be the creative that we are. And, and, and I think that's the new heaven and the new earth for me that I understand it. You know what I mean? I know it now. And so now I can be that creative person that I desire to be and, you know, and walk in that, um, in that, in that presence, if that uh, resonates again, I'm done. Um, may I interject something? Yeah. Uh, um, we, um, we, we don't actually create truth. We become aware of it. And in the interest of us, the necessity of us changing the way we talk, he talked about language. Our language is important. Um, we talk to, see, I, I, I do my best to refrain from talking about what we tap into as opposed to who we are. Why? Uh, because uh, the universe, we can't send mixed signals to the universe that we're tapping into something when we really aren't. Uh, we are becoming aware of something. And that awareness is a big difference uh, than tapping into something. Because when we become aware, uh, now we have a choice. Uh, we can embrace what we have become aware of, or we can walk away from it. Now, when we tap into something, uh, that means that we can do it at will. Uh, anytime we get ready, we can tap into it. That's not going to happen. Um, once we, If we become aware and walk away from it, then uh, there are many, many uh, obstacles that we're going to have to overcome before that awareness takes root in us even if we try to go back to it uh, later on. 
which is a, a huge difference, at least to me anyway, uh, in regards to uh, tapping into it and actually becoming aware of it and embracing it. Because whatever we embrace, that's what we bring close to us. And whatever we bring close to us, that's what we become. The closer we are uh, to embrace, uh, understanding who we are, the better, the more uh, that we are able to live that life of Elohim every single day of our lives. And, and a greater part of that also is in understanding what we're saying when we say I am, because I whatever follows, as we said earlier, is what mm-hmm. we are. And right. that in itself strengthens uh, the ability for, I'm, I'm sorry, strengthens our awareness of who we are and also grants us the strength to walk in it every day. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And as the pastor, I, I just have a comment. Um, just hearing everything that you are saying right now, one of the things is that when we, I'm sorry, and this is Teresa. One of the things that I think about back when I was in those religious settings was the same thing that you are saying is that you couldn't ask a question or they would look at you like you're crazy or you're being disrespectful. Um, but what I like about our environment is that once you're aware, you're aware and you can't go back because those same religion settings, regardless of what city you live in, where you go, is still the same thing. And you're not able to ask the question. If you don't have this much money, it's like you got to get an appointment to talk to the pastor. So I really, really appreciate just hearing everything that I'm hearing and also just thinking about the eight cents when I'm driving and meditating, something tells me stop, uh, don't make that turn. So again, ST, I thank you for this message. I just wanted to make that comment. No, no, thank you. I appreciate it, Teresa. And, and I was gonna, you know, try to use this, uh, and, uh, and I think I'm, I'm putting it to, um, I think I've got a way to express this when it comes to how we can if I'm trying to do this in a how-to standpoint, and, and I just saw this, and um, and hopefully everybody can get bear with me on this for a second. And 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 George and I we've talked about this how you you do things from a in, in, in the athletic background. One of the things that I always remember when um, the the coaches that uh, that got the best out of me. I, I was at my best when I was mentally prepared to do things. And I can remember it started in high school, but and, and everybody does it a little bit now. When, when we talk about using that memory and how it's happened to the past, well, one of the things that they always told us to do, and I'm, and I'm going to show you the difference between the two, is memory is visual and verbal most of the time. Like, you have to see yourself doing it or hear it. But there's also some other aspects that we can tie into it. And I'll give you an example when it comes to feeling. We would practice all week. And on Thursday, Friday night, they told us to, to visualize yourself doing that in the game to become. And if you could see this, if you could visualize yourself doing it over and over again, when the time came, you were actually going to see yourself doing what you were going to be doing on Saturday because you visualized it Thursday and Friday all week. You visualize yourself doing it. And that tapped into a memory that you were preparing yourself to do something that hadn't come up yet, but when Saturday came, I had already seen myself doing it. And that that's how we actually tap into memory and we learn. We talked about the dual coding a couple of weeks ago, how we make it happen with the weather, because you see that weather forecast or the seven-day forecast. You see that, and you're able to know that coming up because you've already seen it. But now, you know, when we talk about Charles brought up the uh, new heaven, new earth, now 
it's, it's so difficult to visualize and see yourself doing it. But you can't go back yet and, and feel it. In other words, like you can't, you can't get that feeling, but because you were able to tap back into the memory, when the time comes for you to react or respond or do something, you get that intuition and that feeling that comes up. Why, why is that? And then, the one thing that we can't do from a memory standpoint, when you start thinking about tasting, like my grandfather made this from scratch bread pudding, and I can't, I can't tell you how it tastes. I can't describe how it tastes. I only know it when I eat it, and it's hers. And I've never had that ever again in my life. So, there's certain things we can pull back from memory, but then there's certain things like, like a taste that you can't. But when we get to that highest level of awareness, that comparison to new heaven, new earth, it's also a feeling that you can hear it, you visualize it, you verbalize it, then you also feel it. And it's only at certain points that we are, we get so connected that we can visualize memory, we can verbalize hearing it, and we can also feel it. But why, why is that? Does anybody have? Because you know we all we were always taught in athletics, say it, write it down. We we still do it to this day. Write it down, see it, and it can happen. Visualize yourself doing it. Visualize yourself doing making this certain thing happen. You know, we talk about this all the time. You can visualize it and see yourself doing it, but until you actually get to where you were doing it, you don't have that feeling, which is that intuition. That's the thing that the eighth sense kind of pulls together, the visualized, verbal, and the feeling of it. Because you know how you felt at a certain point when you when you when you got it all together, there's a certain feeling that you just can't go back and, and pull up, but you can see yourself doing it. And that's that's when when you're able to see yourself doing it and have that feeling and verbalize it, that's a different feeling. But we can't bring back physical memories of things uh, exactly how they were. Like if I tasted a pie, is that pie going to always taste the exact same way or like my grandmother's bread pudding? I haven't met anybody that can make it exactly to where it's going to taste. And so that's where going back in as individuals and, and what you sort of brought up, Teresa, like how it makes sense for you individually, that's where it comes in because when you incorporate that feeling part of it, then we know we've gotten to a different place too, if that makes sense. But uh, can we explain why is that? And I'm trying to give a good example of something here. But any thoughts or comments on that? That's a good example. I appreciate that because I reflect on my grandmother's biscuits. I've never had anyone to do them the way she did. So I definitely understand your message about the bread pudding. Yeah, because we can go back and and bring up certain memories, but there's certain things um, from the past that we can't pull in going forward because there are they're more of a, they're more tied into our physical senses. But when we, if I say that, okay, we're all going to run a mile next week, and God help us, we can we can sit down and prepare for that. With you know, with the addition to running, visualizing yourself running it and completing it, we can visualize yourself running it, completing it every day. And when the time comes to do it with the regular preparation we've been doing physically, that mental preparation also of seeing yourself doing it and completing it, it does become a reality. And then at that time, we get that feeling because now we've experienced it. And and, and that's the that's how that memory that uh, that Rev was just talking about, how I can 
work for us, was trying to give us a real life, you know, example of how it can work for us once we get to create. Because in our minds, we've been creating the story of us going through and completing this mile. We've been creating that. And then when it finally comes time for us to do it, we go through it. And it's a lot easier than it would have been if we had visualized ourselves seeing it. But if you can see yourself doing something and visualize it, it helps. And then once you get to that point of actually doing it, that feeling that we get along with that, that's that eighth sense. That's, mm-hmm. that, that's that ability that we have inside of us that we we just walk right into it, what we're supposed to be able to do. And that's that's what we're that's that's what we're doing when we go back along that timeline of pulling the memory and the completion forward. We're 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 basically going over in our head. We're we're becoming creators. We're creating because we're bringing something to an existence that that we see ourselves being able to do. We see ourselves being able to do it, and then you finally pull through it because you, you just see it, and then that feeling of Actually doing it, that's a sense. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and ST or anyone help me out on this. Um, one of the things that I observe people who create, um, I would view them as they're intoxicated or they drunk for lack of metaphorically speaking. And one day I just got to the point of they're not intoxicated or drunk. It's me that's intoxicated or drunk because I'm looking at someone create that I'm not used to seeing. Um, so when people are creating, all of us in here create a great deal. Um, when all of us would get on the phone with Zoom, you know, sometimes people would want to talk and say, hey, you go first, the ladies go first. Not a trend word now is I yield to you. And that's a pretty simple word, but that's, that's the trend. You created another word, hey, I yield to you. Um, we're creating from the aspect of when Mr. George or Reverend Richard or others get finished speaking, they say, thank you, I'm finished. That's creating. So um, I can remember like my first experience in Greater New Faith. I was, it didn't intimidate me or anything, but it just, something about it I knew was right, but I didn't understand enough about it to know it was right. I it, I didn't understand it to disagree with it. I knew it was good. And I really thought that, like, you know, they out of space. But it was really me that was out of space. The only person who I really, really, really just understood off the muscle was Junebug. I understood his verbosity. Uh, um, and I understood June, and Junebug was good. And then I had to grow into Reverend Richard. I had to grow into Miss Cassie. Um, so when you do create, um, people will view you as you're not normal. And it's it, it's like Moses, not Moses, forgive me, Noah. He was viewed as a drunk. I have a, my interpretation of that is he was such a perfectionist that People didn't understand how he maneuvered. Um, so that's how I look at some people who create. Is that fair to say, Reverend Richard S. T. Mr. George, or others, or is that just another way to look at it? Um, in your experience of watching someone create, well, they look well, like they were normal. Well, I hear you, George. What I hear you saying 
is that you created the space to become more aware of what was being said. And as you became more aware of it, you began, you began to embrace it even more so. Uh, the whole idea of creation is not uh, so much, um, as I said earlier, bringing into existence those things that we uh, have these physical memories about. Uh, honestly, I think that we have spent too much time trying to create in the physical realm. And what I mean by that is this. We want to create an environment where we all have a comfortable living. We want to create an environment where we can bring healing to the body every single time. We want to create an environment uh, where we uh, have friends that we, uh, who we are close to and be comfortable with. However, we, we don't think much about creating in the, the space for the spiritual. Honestly, the only thing that I do believe that's necessary for us to create is space itself. And, and that space, creating that space for the purpose of it being filled with spiritual awareness. And, and in, that, in that regard, um, we began to merge the physical and the spiritual because we, we are very much aware and sometimes too much aware of what happens in the, um, in the physical realm and not aware enough of um, the space that's needed uh, to create in the, um, I'm sorry, the, the create, we are not aware of the need to create the space for us to be filled with uh, a spiritual awareness. When we talk about something resonating with us, and we don't quite know how to uh, regurgitate it. And then later on, we find ourselves uh, talking about it. It simply means that you have created the space, and now you are able to regurgitate what you, what you feel that space with, and you are able to live it, and you're able to experience it so that others can see it in your life. Thank you. Yeah, Reverend, and... Uh... Just on the heels of that, I, you know, just thinking, and this is something that everybody really can. But, does can that make about. sense? Yes. Yes. If, and I was going to go on the heels of that, and this is probably something that's, and, and you've done this. I mean, uh, I know that's one of the things that uh, I can look back on and see for sure. I can remember. Being, and this is sort of the uh, where you, you talk about getting stuck, or or where like there's a there's a now what moment. I can remember um, being in church, and everyone said that <clears throat> twelve years old, you need to um, you know you need to get baptized, and um, and I can remember this years of people. Uh, You know, getting baptized, and I remember just thinking about visualizing <clears throat> when I'm going to get the the guts to go up there and stay up there, and said, "Okay, uh, you know, I'm ready." And I can remember people how they, you know, what you wore and you walked around the church and the song, and they take you in and and and, and get baptized. And uh, so, in my head, I can remember the kid just watching that and visualizing that in trying to put myself in that situation. And then, you know, finally, okay, I do stay up there one day and say, okay, I'm ready to join the church or whatever you want to have it. And then there's like several months that go by because people are in line, you know, and you get your Sunday assigned. And just remember visualizing how that's going to go in my head. And, and then it finally happens. I go through it. And just like I was saying earlier, you know, I'm trying to create that space in my head for, okay, that feeling that comes next and everything gets aligned up with that visual and the feeling of the baptism going. And still didn't really understand it 
other than getting wet. But then several years later, we look at baptism and we study it and we explain it. And I and more got pointed out to me. I was more aware then of something that happened back when I was 12, 13. And just so much awareness got opened up then that you do get it then. But at that time where you were trying to like pull on a memory, for instance, for me and to pull it all together that day, it, you know, I'm looking at it now, how that didn't connect for me. But then I can remember also just in teaching when we were in the old Raiders' building, and it's like maybe a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night we were coming in there, how you look at, okay, I'm going to talk about this. Um, you're studying. you got four or five different books. You're writing notes down, and you're creating that, like I said, that space as being there. And then you get up there, and none of that stuff comes out the way that you have, you know, you got it sequenced and your agenda because you basically have just created the space to to listen and share and not necessarily go down the syllabus, if that makes sense. And so I see it exactly how you're saying, like you create this space and you, you kind of like, you know, you open yourself up but it goes back to just parts of the A says the most important things with it is communication, listening, and being willing to share. And you just basically are creating space to listen and share. Going back to even what Teresa just said of traditional versus what we do now, we create the space to listen and share. And that connection, communication, all kind of it's a it's an integration. It's a, it's a lot of things just being woven together. And if you look at it from a big picture, it's just a lot of threads that we are just weaving together every day by listening, sharing, and opening up, creating space, if that makes sense. But that's how I took it when you were saying that. Yeah. And, and again, as T, you know, as you're speaking, you know, it just made me, you know, just think about, you know, again, where we talk about our physical and the spiritual. But um, when I think about, you know, uh, you know, the nose or t- the, the sense of smell, you know, again, and you use, you know, a little bit of sports as an analogy, but it's like, you know, before, you know, you shoot a foul shot, for an example, and I apologize because I just want to try to speak it in a way where it can come out where it's clear for me. You see a person take a deep breath before they shoot. And so I'm just trying to, you know, visualize it in terms of, as, you know, my coach Cheney should say muscle memory, but I think spiritually it's that breath. And that breath, when you inhale, you know, it's that, 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 that sense or, or not smell in terms of something that you may taste it, but that, that, smell in terms of just breathing that I think that that's creating that space where I can, you know, visualize and verbalize now in terms of just being at that peace, you know, before you actually do that, what you desire to do. And I think that all of us may have the different arts in terms of things that we do, whether it's music, sports or whatever, but I still think that it's that, that spiritual sense you know, that we're incorporating all of them in the eighth sense that we're able to, you know, experience that new heaven and earth in a way that we can be um, fulfilled to accomplish that, that we want to desire. So I, I think that, you know, just you just speaking on the importance of our eighth, all of our senses, in one sense we may be able to get it a little bit more clearer and I, I believe that that's an example of tonight you know for me in terms of taking that breath and wanting to just you know just speak or just get it out but at the same time again I can see that it's is is manifesting if that resonates I'm done 
No, it does. Hey. For sure. I mean, it does. I mean, you because uh, when when you can do the visualization, the verbalization, you can see it, and then you also can get that feeling with it. Because <laughs> when you were when you were saying that, and I know somebody else has been, but when you were saying that, I can remember that first free throw. They didn't tell you your foot would just be shaking like crazy when you were shooting it in front of a full gym. So it it, mm-hmm. it is. It comes together, and it's like you create that space, and 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 when it does come together, you just you know you you it's a different it's a feeling. Someone was getting ready to say something. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Hey, hey, yes, it's Ron. Um, maybe you guys can help me to to to, to see this because I see it a little differently and, and explain it to me if I'm if I'm, I'm off here. Uh, I see the the visualization and the making room as, as two different things. Uh, I I see. The visualization to me is almost like a, a expecting something that come and you're not familiar with it, like the manor experience. They 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 this thing came from the sky and they called it manor because they needed to identify it. They needed to make it something that they were used to. They couldn't accept the fact that it was something brand new from heaven, from God. So they had to attach it to something else. And I see that is the same as when we try to visualize it. And here's what I mean. When you go back and look at Genesis, it says the earth was formless. That tells you right now they're not talking about a physical thing. So when it says the new heaven and the new earth, it does say to rebuild. It says to restore but and to repair, but it's not talking about bringing back what you were familiar with. Um, the Hebrews say it. I'm not familiar with this place. We got to cross this place, but I'm not familiar with this. I'm in a new space here. And that's the liquidness to me of that earth being formless. You become, because remember when we first uh, understood what the human was and being human and being able to connect to different worlds, being the Elohim and being able to lock into the ancestors. So what room does that give them uh, as the ancestors if we are to do it all? We are just the conduit. We are uh, the, 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 uh, the, the invitation to the spiritualness into the earth. And part of that is, as we say it, the making the space, making the room. That's what we do. And from that point on, all, you know, what what is desired, as we have noticed in the last couple of years, doesn't come the way we expect it to come because it's not going to taste like the bread we're used to. It comes in a way that is needed for mankind, but we don't always recognize it to be so. So, the, to, and, and, and if I'm wrong, let, let's talk about it. But how, I guess how I see it is, is the, 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 the formlessness here is, is, is saying literally this, this thing is not going to be familiar to you. And what we trust, what we have faith in, what we know is that I have the proof of what is in me, what lives in me, this feeling, as you talked about earlier, uh, this these experiences to know that I am Elohim, that I am not the same Ron that I was a few months ago, a few years ago. So that is the movement. That is the catalyst. 
that starts all of this in motion. But I think we miss it when we look for familiarity and it may not be, at least how I see it, may, may not be what we're supposed to look for in the spiritual sense. Uh, and I, and I, I, I'm, I don't want to ramble here, but does, okay. that, does that make sense at all? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, ST, I, yeah I'm sorry, okay. ST, before you respond, uh, can I respond first and then I want you to, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. piggyback. But, but Ron, I truly appreciate what you're saying because I think that when we look at the senses, we see it, like I say, in the manner of what we're accustomed to. But I think that there's a spiritual aspect of each sense. And I think how you just said it is how it resonates with me that it's an it's, it's a unfamiliar taste. It's a taste that's different from what we used to tasting but it's that 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 you know that spiritual sense of newness that we're not going to know you know like you say exactly that is not going to be that same taste but we know that it it tastes good this is what I'm you know what I was looking to taste I don't know if that again resonates but I truly understand what you're saying in terms of familiarity because that's what we're accustomed to but there's going to be a new taste or you know it's going to be something that again yeah going to come the way that the creator wants us to get it. So I just wanted to share that thought, ST. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no you're, you're good. I mean, and Ron, I appreciate it, George. That's, that's good. And I saw it, Ron, when you said it, I was like, that's a good question because the space that's being created, it's, 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 the, it's not the physical, like they're saying, it's the, you're creating the ability to see and, and who you are. So in regards to like this, you know, I'm going to give it to you both sides of it. In regards to just saying the free throw, what was created was the ability to know that you can make it, that you are, that's, that's just the, the making of that is just the manifestation of a result. But what you're creating is the eye, the, you know, the space of saying who you are, you, you are accepting who you are in that awareness um, and you're creating that that ability is being created based on who you are, that memory of who you are. For example, if I visualize and I say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm creating that space of, of completing this, whatever it is. But on the flip side, if I deny it, I don't. I'm also creating anxiety. Which, which doesn't allow a lot of space. You know, we talked about just um, being who you are and understanding your identity, but we also remember talking about when we deny that, you also create an anxiety of um, what happens when I, you know, if I don't do this, what happens if I don't make it, if I don't visualize. So what you're creating, you're creating the opportunity to be who you're supposed to be at that moment. You're giving yourself a chance to, you're creating space for you to, to demonstrate who you are. And that demonstration of who you are creates that result that we're talking about. So if we don't, if you don't, um, if you don't create the opportunity for yourself, that's the space that's not there. So by visualizing something all week and, and seeing myself doing it and walking into it, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm making an opportunity wide open for me to actually do it. And the doing it is just a manifestation of me totally understanding who I am, whether it be like I'm the free throw maker, whether it be I'm the person that is actually completing and, and getting through this situation that I'm getting through. I'm creating an opportunity for me to walk in and demonstrate who I am. And by me understanding and knowing that and visualizing that and going back in memory and reinforcing that, recalling and reproducing and creating that moment and bringing it to the existence, I'm creating that time. 
And on the flip side, when I'm denying it, the uncertainty, then you, you, you bring into to play anxiety, doubt, all the things that kind of shrink that opportunity for you to stand up. So it's, it's, uh, it's more as you creating the opportunity for you to walk into who you are. And, and if we deny it, then we're hoping that somebody else will, will do it and not us. Like the, the, the game, so to say that, you know, I'm just giving an example. When they uh, are trying to foul the right person, they're going to foul this guy who's he's not tied and he's not aware of his ability to make it. So they're going after the guy that, that they know is not demonstrating the ability to make these free throws, and that's the person they're fouling. And that person is on the line. And his level of understanding and awareness of who he is as a free throw shooter is not as confident as the guy who is. And so I hope that's a good analogy. But you're creating the space to walk in and to demonstrate who you are at that moment in time. Just like we talked about the A sense is sometimes we have to operate and be who we are at that given time and moment. The thing that's being created is the the space and the and the opportunity and the time frame to allow yourself to do it versus um the denial. And when the time comes, there's um, anxiety, there's um, there's doubt, there's a you know a, a step back, so to say, because the awareness of who you are is not uh, is not the is not the it's not a total commitment to it. Whereas if we are disciplined and creating that discipline and visualizing it, we're creating an opportunity for who we are. I hope that wasn't a long-winded explanation. Yeah, I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ron. No, ma'am. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's along the lines of what you are talking about. So go ahead and, and finish your thought, and then I want to ask well, a question but, and add to it. Okay. Um, I, I, I see this. And I was going to use you as an example. Kathy did a, a, a lesson on Revelation, and she went all the way back to the Reagan years. And we could not see back then what we were studying, what we were doing, and what our desires were. We knew what our desires were, and we knew what we wanted to see, but nothing came in the way that we wanted to see it. So the universe starts working and it starts pulling things into place and it pulls things into place till you end up with a black president. And we never saw that coming and we never saw the thing that, you know, uh, cause a lot of us say it, I never saw it. I'd see this in my lifetime, but we could not see the spiritual side of that. We were just excited about it and happy and prayerful that it happened, but we really couldn't see why. We couldn't see the why, nor could we see our role in bringing this thing about. We did not know that that was the beginning or, or, or another beginning of something else happening, we, and that something else is bringing in a Donald Trump. So Obama agitated uh, those, uh, for lack of a better word, let's just say those conservatives so much that they brought in a Donald Trump. And what the Trump did, Pastor called him the, uh, uh, a type of light enlightenment, is he started uncovering things. We never saw us as being a part of that. But we were a part of that. The pandemic comes in. And the earth stands still and the earth starts to, the pollution starts to fade away. The oceans start to cleanse themselves. The animals lose their animal behavior. We never saw us being a part of that. All we were praying for is forgiveness and love and peace and joy. So all of these things start taking place, start taking shape that we were a part of. That's the liquidness of the earth. That's the, the earth being formless. It, it's you, you, you prepare it through your prayer 
You prepare it through your desire and your recognition, your new awareness, because that's the cultivating of the earth, your new awareness of being the Elohim. And you, you're bringing about new wellness as, as you cultivate the earth. And, 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 and you, you're increasing the consciousness of it. So as all of this is taking place, the spirit world is at work. And nothing happens the way we expected it to happen. So in the midst of all this, we understand the ancestors. And they're not just passively standing by. You are the conduit. And what they see on the other side is helping us to visualize what we're doing now. This space that we're creating, they're a part of that as well, filling that space, because now they have a different understanding. And here's the part that, that, that kind of hit me uh, when, when I was listening to us talk about this yesterday, and I didn't quite see this part of it. But part of the ancestors that we're looking at, what if, what if part of them is that old clansman who has been a part of some lynchings for, for generations, and now he's on the other side, and he sees truth, and he understands truth, and he said, oh, my God, what have I done? And I see light. I see that there's somebody in the earth that is trying to bring about truth, that is trying to do this right. What if that is your ancestor as well? What if he is just as much a part of this? So in the midst of all this chaos that we see, we have embraced the peace and the enlightenment in it. Yeah, we, we get caught up in the chaos too, but we, 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 we are also embracing far more than that. So when I say this, that's what I'm saying. Uh, there, 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 there's part of this, uh, yeah, we, we, we can relate to the fact that we have experienced peace. We have experienced forgiveness. We have experienced love, but not to this degree. And, 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 and in not trying to shape it, we create the space and the expectation is high, but I don't know what I'm expecting totally. But I'm open for anything that happens. And yes, it has shaken us. Some of this stuff has shaken us. Do you ever stop to think that to get the white people or uh, the Europeans involved in this on a personal level, more children had to die, more people had to be shot, and that we are part of that, that as well? The, the, the kid that takes the, the assault rifle and kills two white people in whatever town that was, whatever city, and gets acquitted. Well, those people wouldn't have been out there if there had not been some other people dying. So all of this is taking place. All this stirring up is, is, is to me, part of, of beginning. All of it is part of the new heaven and new earth. It doesn't look like what we expected yet. But it's like making a cake. It's still in the bowl, and it's still getting getting uh, ingredients added to it, and it's still getting beaten, and it doesn't look like the finished product. But th th to me, that's where we are with this. So we, to me, talk about the new heaven and new earth. It, 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 the, the, the newness of it is, is a refreshing, and it's taking us back totally to the beginning that we're not familiar with. It's not a new thing, but it's a new thing to us. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. And, and Kathy, before you um, come on board, this is Teresa. To, pick, to piggyback off of what Ron has just said a few minutes ago, my job put out a MS Teams tool um, um, message to ask people, where are you from? So, and they did it because they was like, well, this is diversity month. And so we want to ask everybody where we're from, where they're from. Well, with that being said, how can you ask someone that, especially when we came over here on a ship? And so my response, I, I thought about it. 
I bred, you know, breathed a little bit. And then I said, I'm from Africa somewhere. And that's how I responded. But pastor is constantly sharing and teaching and letting us know that we have to come out of that zone and we have to talk because if you don't, then you're not bringing awareness to that environment when it's time for you to speak. So I've been speaking a lot lately, but it's more of in this time when my time comes to speak. Thank you. I just want to share that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Go ahead, and Kathy. the only thing I was going to add, um, and Ron summed it up beautifully, I have been, and it's so, it shouldn't be ironic to me, but I'm, I'm just overjoyed that we're speaking of this because all day I have been thinking about the scripture where God says, I do a new thing, will you not recognize it? Mm. Because what's happening with me, mm. as we are teaching, the scriptures come to me that undergirds everything that we're teaching. So I was thinking about that because everything that I thought I recognized and understood about scriptures that we've taught before, I'm seeing them totally different in a different way. So as I'm looking at this today and I'm thinking, God says, I'll I'll do a new thing. Will you not recognize it? I'm Elohim. The new thing that is being done and the recognition, recognition. And when you all were talking and Ron was just all in what my head has been, where my head has been all day. I, there's something for me to recognize something. There has to be a sense of familiarity. There has to be something familiar there. And what we are saying when we're saying, well, you know what, that resonates with me. And I will tell you all in a heartbeat when we're teaching something or when another teacher may be teaching, I may say, you know what, I don't see it all right now, but I trust what's being taught and it's resonating inside of me and I know I'm going to see it eventually. So as I listen to everything Ron said just now, I, I concur, I agree wholeheartedly because what I'm beginning to understand is I am that God that is now recognizing that a new thing is being done and the place of familiarity is inside of me. And it's taking me back to the place where Ron said is that place of beginning. And from that place of beginning, I open myself up and allow myself to create new opportunities, new ways of viewing things. You'll hear me say a lot now, it is how I frame whatever I'm dealing with. I can look at it through worry, doubt, or whatever other thing I want to look at it through, or I can sit with it and say, okay, and you all will hear me say this now, when something goes on, I can sit with it and say, this is happening. Am I going to fall apart, or am I going to be who I know I am and trust that the answer is in me? That's creating that space inside of me from a place of beginning to allow a new opportunity to be birthed in me and to create something different. We've often heard the... um people say insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So we are beyond the point of now responding the way we've always responded when we find ourselves in a situation. I love the example George gave earlier when he said, I knew something was going on at Greater New Faith, but I had to kind of grow into that. I had to make space and allow myself to trust that what is being taught is right. And then I began to, to open myself up and to see more. So I've been really thinking about this thing about I'm doing a new thing. Will you not be, will you not recognize it? Will it not resonate in you as a, from a place of familiarity? Even though you will hear me say we are in places and facing things that we have not faced before. But I definitely believe and know that learning what we're learning from the eighth sense, the answer to how to solve all of these things is in me. And if I will just recognize it and what that means to me is go inside myself to a place that's familiar, a place of knowing. We've talked about there's something stronger than faith, and that's knowing. And now as we start moving into that place of knowing what, who I am, knowing that I am that I am who I am and trusting that and sitting with whatever goes on and allowing myself to say, I'm going to create from a place of being I am, that changes everything. So everything that Ron was saying I agree in everything that's been said tonight, not just what Ron was saying, but everything that everyone has said, but that scripture had been with me all day. I do a new thing. I am the I that's doing a new thing. Will I not recognize what I'm doing? 
And that's that's coming as a result of understanding the age sense and who we are as I am. And I just wanted to share that with you all tonight to see if I'm seeing it the right way because it's been resonating with me all day that, oh, my God, this is not some external force working to say I'm doing a new thing or you're going to recognize it. This is an internal force at work in me, and am I going to recognize what I'm creating? And when I see it that way, that just changes everything for me. So I just wanted to put that out there and see if, if I'm seeing it the right way or, or can you see what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah, well, Kathy, you know, I definitely, you know, what you're saying resonates with me. And I know that Pastor had always, you know, talked about, you know, just continue to meditate, continue to read. And at some point in time, you know, those things will come back to you at that ripe R-I-P-E time. And so, you know, as Ron and all of us were talking a little bit about space, you know, we, you know, have read the book, The Prayer of the Cosmos, but it talked about the Aramaic word sh shalu, you know, creating space, you know what I mean? Removing the clutter, you know what I mean? Um, removing the entangled th threads. You know what I mean? And I think now we're bringing in this newness, you know, that, you know, at a time that I needed to hear about space, it resonates even more now in terms of just being able to have the opportunity. And I truly appreciate, you know, Teresa, your, you know, your communication, your, your spirit, because I think to be able to ask questions, to be able to talk, or just to be able to be in oneness. And I think that's the whole concept. Uh, you know, about Ubuntu, I am because we are, and we have the power to be able to change, you know, the situation and the circumstance in the world, in the universe. And so, again, it's just been a, you know, exciting and encouraging night, you know, for me to uh, be a part of um, our, our dialogue. I'm done. Yeah, thank you, George. Kathy, George, Ron. I mean, it's, I mean, it's powerful because when I, uh, I know when I teach and, and and I listen, everything really comes from past lessons. And and that's the powerful thing that I have to hear, Ron, when you're talking about it. It's that's what I mean, we keep going, we say it every week, but every time we say it, somebody brings up something else again to show us why it's so important for us to accept who we are, the status of who we are, because so much, so much comes with it. I mean, when I hear every time I, no matter what you bring up, Cassie, I always hear your love and kindness message and how things apply, you know, and, and, and Ron, think about how much you have talked about the beginning in Genesis, because those things don't happen. It's like it's not happening by chance. Like that's in you. That's who you are. So when we talk about the creating space, it's just giving us the opportunity to to really demonstrate who we are, and who we are is got to start with us first. Like you know, I got to know who I am. Um, Pastor can tell us all the abilities we have all the time. We can look at the scripture and how it relates to us all the time. But there's nothing like that feeling that we get when we understand real compassion, real love for people. Um, we understand what's going on around us because we feel like we have a sense of responsibility for what happens around us. And that you feel that, that feeling is there, Ron, because you were speaking with what you felt because we, you understand who you are. And if we don't, if we don't understand who we are, these signs and things that we feel, we'll miss it sometimes. And so, I, you know, when, when both you guys were talking, I thought back to how we felt and when the shooting happened in the, in the Charleston church and, and, you know, we talked about forgiveness 
and being, like truly being forgiveness and how those folks personified, they just didn't talk about forgiveness or they became forgiveness. All these attributes that the creator has, we have it too. That's why we feel it so much because it's who we, it's who we are. And every time we look at a lesson, every time we explain something, I go back and look at a past lesson. I don't view that lesson now as something I was taught. I look at it as, okay, that's a part of me. Like, that's in me now. Like, that, that's in me. And and that's why, I, 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 you know, and every time somebody brings, a, you know, a, a powerful message like that or a statement, I go back to the beginning of when we started this um, with the age sense. It's like, it's really, that's, that's our identity. It's like, really, like, you feel it. You feel that that's, those are things that we have dealt with and it's a part of us. I mean, like, it's not just lip service, the experience, it's, it's who we are. And so I, I think more than anything, just kind of summing up what everybody just, just brought up. I mean, it's just a powerful example of, of the essence of our identity. And when we uh, are talking about creating space and time, it's just an opportunity for us to be, truly be who we are, whether that's just being loving kindness. All those things are aspects of Elohim. And, um, and it, I mean, it's just the, you got to make room to express that and that awareness, that level of awareness. It's, it, it sits with everybody. I mean, like, you know, um, I can't tell George how to be more aware of who he is, but, he, you know, but when George is being who he is, I can feel that. And it's just, that's that connection to that. That's why this identity thing is so, so deep. And even Captain, you go back to when you talked about the, the identity and we talked about the I am, we talked about kingdom principles, like, can we see how all this stuff is actually us now? Like that's that's it ain't the lesson anymore that it's actually us that's being that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean that's why I get out each week is like, man, I'm I ain't really talking about this thing. I'm 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 like, you know, I could see myself being it and I feel the being it and all the past lessons is like okay, why is all this stuff coming back up? Why are we bringing, you know, because now it's like, it's like, yeah, you, it went in one ear and, and we say, you know, going one out, but it didn't. It's like, it's it's in us now. It's like, it's our, we've, we've prayed and we've meditated, we've taught and we've done all this stuff so much that it, it's 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 who we are, it's, you know, and that's, that's the power that I'm, I mean, like, I'm like, man, this this thing is really like, forcing you to become who you are and you just got to be it. And that's the, that's, that's the most enlightening part of it. It's like, and I keep saying it every week. So yeah, we got to go back and, and line us up with ourselves. But it's really that inner, that inner thing is just kind of constantly tell you that all these things are, are being integrated. It's all being put in that, that, that pot because we are, it. we, you know, you know, we are, I am, it's just we're being it instead of talking about a lesson now we're we're being that we're being that attribute that attributes in us now and that's the that's that a sense the ls that awareness of that it's like we're we're not talking we're being and when we're being so many things kind of flow through us ron that was just like you had years of stuff to just flow through you right then because it's you it's 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 you. It's you. your identity. Is someone getting ready to, to say something about it? I um I I you you're talking about what you feel. I was uh earlier today I was I was thinking about the kid that the stealer, the quarterback that died, got hit by the truck. And every time I thought about that, I'd feel a certain way. And, and this guy walked up to me and he started talking and he said, you know, I feel that. I really feel that. 
and, and, and we started talking about what we both felt and uh, how real that was. And, and, and every time uh, we, we see a tragedy, how does that make you feel? And, and, and that's real. That's real. And I, I guess outside of this circle, that was kind of the first time I've ever talked to anybody else about it. Uh, and it, it, it wasn't maybe 10 minutes later, I was uh, in the break room and, and reading the news, breaking news. And, and this article, uh, I couldn't pass up. Uh, they exonerated this kid that was executed in the in this state uh, when he was 14 years old. It was the article is about uh, the youngest kid that was executed, ever executed uh, uh, for murder. And this kid, uh, you, 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 you know what? I don't even have to tell you the story. You know the story. But little black kid executed, and, and they finally exonerated him. And, and, and of course, you know it shouldn't have happened. But it it it, it pained me. But it also, probably for the first time, I felt a pain for those who prosecuted him. And I wondered, what are they feeling now? That they've long since left the earth. They they see things differently. What do they feel now? So we are right in the middle of something. And, 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 and there's part of this that has me real excited, although I don't see it. I don't see it yet. There's something about us. And I, it made me think about it. And you've heard me talk about this before, guys. But when S talked about Melchizedek and not being able to trace his roots, well, because of slavery, we can't trace our roots. And there's something about that to me. So that this group of people are doing this in the America, in a, in a place that they're not a part of the land. They're not a part of the, 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 the consciousness that, that shapes this land, nor are we a part of the consciousness of the land that we originally came from. So maybe, maybe. We're already in the new beginning. Maybe we're shaping the consciousness now to come of that new beginning. So, you know, even in 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 in, in my not understanding that, uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about where we are. Uh, I get impatient sometimes because I want to see things faster. But that's you know that's 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 me. I guess battling with my mortality at times, but, uh, but I, but I thank you. I thank you for let, letting me finish this. And I, I, uh, I, I just appreciate everybody. I, I appreciate this group. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I just keep thinking that we, we just be in this and, you know, every time something happens in the world, we don't, we don't, we don't miss it. And uh, and I don't know for some reason I was just thinking around when you talking just uh, I can think back several years ago and this is just because I guess it's something you know like when you feel it and feel it and I can remember and I don't know if you guys have you know how we felt or uh, what we talked about when those kids were stuck in the cave with that coach and the cave just fell in on them and, and there's just like there was no way they should have lived and it came out. Mm-hmm. And, and and how we we felt that coaches we we felt like we connect with that coach's energy, and and he was <laughs> he was understanding that he was Elohim in that cave. We don't. I mean, I couldn't tell you how we shaped them coming out or or what was done to get them out, but just that connection, how we felt like we just knew those kids were getting out of that cave. I remember and, that. Yeah, and we were all the way on this side, and and this how it, it just you know, something that we can't explain, but you just, you know how you felt, and 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 how you know how we just directed the energy, and 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 we just were, we just stayed who we were, and and whatever needed to happen happened, but. It's just, you know, 
all these things are coming back up and it's coming back at us fast. Like, and so, and going back to the beginning of it, when you can visually and verbally recall something like that, but then also, you know, it was that, you know, it was Elohim, the Elohim in you, when you can feel it, when you can recall it and feel it, feel that energy at the time. We can't remember what something tastes like exactly to a T, but when you can recall and, and, and combine that recollection with the feeling, that's the that's the energy that Rev talked about when we when you when it is tapped into and you you're aware of that you know it's just uh, it's just special it's it's powerful. Uh, I mean, like and what she said, Ron, all the things you you brought up, it just wasn't you just saying it. As you and Kathy were talking about it, you could feel it, and that's the that's what we're talking about when that that space is created to give the opportunity to like where you can just kind of feel it and and be who you're supposed to be. Because when we deny it, we shrink in it. When we deny it, we deny the awareness. We're, we're taken away from who we are. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. I think the same kind of thing happened when when we watched that young lady climb the flagpole and take down that Confederate flag. And right then, all of us felt that that's it. It's done. It's coming yeah. down permanently. Yeah. And we were, yeah, we were all on the same page and we just all felt it. Yeah. The energy just went up the pole. I mean, you could just, you feel it. And that's those those moments that why you know for whatever reason we uh, why do they feel different why do they you know and it's just that moment was beginning it was uh, new heaven new earth that it was that moment that 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 gate that portal that it was at that you know and you feel those you feel it's intense you feel it. And that's the, that's the, that's why we keep going back while we need each other, and that uh, you can't do it in isolation. You can't do it in isolation, but but you know, as, as individuals, we uh, we validate it to ourselves sometimes. That's so. Um, when we're looking at the, the memory and the recall, is that that validation to ourselves sometimes that okay, yeah. I have I a question. Yes. Um, and it kind of goes back to what Ron was talking about earlier about um, he was saying how sometimes when a new thing happens and then we we out of our own sense of not not of who we really are but out of our own head sense of who we are we try to to name it. Um, and to make it into something familiar. Well, my question is, is that a good thing? Or is that not a good thing? Because I kind of see where Ron was coming from when he said, um, if we try, I don't know if I'm saying it exactly like you said it, Ron, but anyway, but if we try to, if we try to give it a name that's familiar, Sometimes we we lose, in my opinion, sometimes we lose the essence of it um, and it becomes mundane as opposed to us knowing that it's something different and we need to ex and we need to let ourselves just be open to it as opposed to trying to trying to give it a name that makes it more mundane. Um, am I on the right track with that? Yeah, so, so in essence, we're asking um, what was actually created instead of trying to label what was created. 
can we just uh, step back and, and and really see what was created? Because some, you know, we may have thought, okay, uh, something we may have thought, well, hey, that was a natural disaster that was created. Well, I know but, Pastor's as, always saying, don't try to shape it. Don't try to shape it. Just let it be. Let mm -hmm. it be. And yeah, I had something else that it wasn't. So let I, it be, I, let it play out, is what you're saying? Yeah, I, I, think that, I think she said it beautifully. All I was trying to say is, let's trust where we are. We, we don't need to, to analyze it too hard. Let's trust where we are. We're at a place that's unfamiliar, but we've, we, what we're experiencing is true. What we're experiencing is real. And, and, and let's not diminish it by trying to put a label on it or try to make it look familiar. Is it, is it an amazing thing that we very well could be at a place where man has never been in the earth? As far as our understanding and, and our, our feeling of oneness with each other and feeling of oneness and, and, and wonder with the creator. Isn't this amazing? So th this, this feeling is real, but it's hard to put a feeling in a box. Right. And, 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 and you, we, we can let our past and our or uh, maybe our fear or or maybe our uh, anxieties try to wrap a bow around it and call it something, but it takes right. away the essence, you know? It takes so, away the essence and the power of... of so I, I, I think I just said it beautifully. So in essence, we should always look at creation through the eight sense because if we're looking at it, in terms of that, we're not trying to label it. We're not trying to uh, shape what was it brought into existence. If we're looking at it from a spiritual standpoint, we're not looking at um, the, the physical manifestation of it so much as just, you know, if we say love and kindness, it's not going to always look the same all the time either. So I, I definitely see what you're, I, I, I see exactly what you're saying. I mean, like, um, if you say that love and kindness was created, you can't make it look like what what you want love to look like all the time. You kind of have to like trust the trust the process that it it is love, and you're gonna have to operate from an intuitive standpoint and step back and, and really let your, what is your intuition telling you and not try to shape something where love needs to go in this direction or, or look this way or, or, see, or, or figure it out in a certain way. And so I do see where you have to like, that's where it's important to really not always look at it from um, a certain standpoint or, or from some of the other senses. A lot of food for thought tonight, a lot to think about. You're right. So, as I have a question, I missed some of what Audrey said because I had to answer the door. But when I when I think about I knew a do I do a new thing, will you not recognize it? And when I said, um, Recognition speaks to familiarity. I, I guess what I'm thinking too, not shaping anything, definitely not trying to shape anything or or any other things that claim, name it, claim it, anything like that. But when we are learning to live from the eighth sense or live as, as that being that lives from the eighth sense, when we speak of the new thing, 
that's something being awakened in us that was lying dormant that we didn't even know that was there. And when it is awakened, that becomes familiar to me. It's new, but it's not something I shun because it's uncomfortable. And even if it's maybe if it, even if it's a little uncomfortable, I still know to embrace it because it feels like the right thing for me to do. So is that not a part of the familiarity there that because I guess my question becomes how would I know to embrace this new awakening, this new level of awareness, this, that how would I even know I'm back at the place of beginning to create if I didn't, if it didn't feel familiar to me? And, and, and what I mean by familiar it's nothing newly created that's been put in, in me, in the earth realm, in me. It's always been there, but it's been lying dormant. So that's part of me understanding or, or wrapping my mind around this this newness and familiarity as well. And, and I, like I said, I missed some of what Audrey said. And when I got back, she was wrapping it up. But um, are, are we saying along the same lines? I'm not sure. Yeah, we can get Audrey to restate it too. And, and Kathy, I, one of the things I'm going to say before I have Audrey to restate it is, is the you source. You restate it, ST. <laughs> yeah. So we can we can we can see what's coming from the source. So if so if, so okay, I don't know how long I've known you, Kathy, but I've known you a long time now. If someone said that Kathy's gone crazy, and they're like she's doing some things. We don't know what Kathy's doing, but that's like Kathy's just gone crazy. My my connection with the source that is Kathy, I would not come off the handle and agree with that. I would at, at that point, knowing Kathy, I would take a step back and say, you know what? I'm gonna let Kathy do her thing because based on what I've got from Kathy in the past. And based on my connection and how I know Cassie, those aren't crazy acts. As Cassie is, uh, that would be the last thing for me to look at from that perspective. People may, but because I, I trust the source and, and, and based on what I've uh, done in the past or come and I've learned from Cassie in the past that no, Cassie's not crazy. I'm going to take a step back and, and Kathy's seeing something, and I'm gonna to have to just take a step back and listen, and 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 follow Kathy in that regard. And so I think sometimes we re- we have to take a look at what's our connection, how we feel about the source, what are we feeling from the source of it. But if you could restate that, Audrey, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, I would too. Kathy, Thank you, Audrey. I was I was saying. And I'll just say this on, up front. I think you and I are talking about something a little bit different. But I was saying um, how when Ron was saying like that, that the people called what they got manna because they they wanted to make it familiar. But I was saying um, sometimes when we try to make it familiar, um, it kind of loses its essence and it becomes more mundane so that we then just sort of look at it and go, oh, and then turn away and go on about our business. But I think what you're saying, I think what you're saying is it becomes, it's familiar to you inside. Um, Right. So that's a little bit different. What I'm talking about is that people who will say, oh yeah, I'll write a book, you know? And in that way it becomes mundane. It kind of loses its power. Mm, yeah. But yeah, but what you're saying is it becomes familiar to you inside and it sort of opens right. up doors in you. So exactly. You, I think yeah. we're talking you about are something saying, a little bit different. Yeah, and the example that when S said what he just said, I was just thinking about years ago, when, a long time ago, actually, when Pastor told us, follow me as I follow God. And when you see God, he will not look like what you were expecting. 
we did not even know what he was talking about when he said that years ago. But we trusted what we heard, and we right. took this journey, and look where we are now. Right. So absolutely. And I see what you're saying, too. So, yeah, thank you for clearing that up. Because, like I said, I stepped away, and I missed a little bit of it. And I wanted to make certain we're all on the same page. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And, and as everybody get what I guess what I was saying about the source too, and and that's why uh, when we when we go back and we talk about like internalizing things for yourself so that you have a complete confidence and understanding of uh, what was said or taught, and based on you understanding your identity. And so, and that's what I was just kind of like reiterating that if someone said that Kathy was uh, afraid of losing her mind based on what she was talking about. I would not feel that way because of just um, all the things that I've internalized before in the past and, and understood completely what she's been saying. And so, therefore, that uh, that familiarity comes from the connection that we both kind of understand the identity. And then from there, it's, it's so much easier to, to take a step back, no matter what the external comments or pressures may be. You know, I'm a little more apt to to follow her because of the connection and uh, the familiarity, familiar familiarity based on identity and, and who we, uh, you know, who we've kind of built uh, our awareness around, and, and so that's that's why if someone says, oh, "Oh, that person's crazy," and I don't know what they're saying. You can dismiss it so much easier because you know, the connection and the identity and the awareness of uh, you're both on the same page and you're both coming from the same source and you understand it a lot more. And, um, and, and, and that's just what we'll be fighting. And I hope that's a good external, internal example way that everybody can kind of see. But any other questions or comments on that? Uh, I, mean, I, I definitely think there's been a lot of powerful messages, a lot of things said tonight that we can really uh, internalize and, and, and really deep dive on for ourselves this week and, and hopefully be some more good questions and comments and statements to come to. But I, I appreciate everybody uh, you know, making this thing flow tonight. It really opened up a lot of um, food for thought and and also connected the dots on a lot of other things. So thank you, Ron, Kathy, Audrey, uh, George. I mean, that was um, there was some powerful stuff that came through tonight that just revved with just uh, helping us connect the dots and, and kind of pull this thing together. Thank you, Ash. Appreciate it. I can't forget Charles uh, and Teresa, you, you guys. I mean, everybody really, I mean, your contribution tonight really just kind of helped um, pull this thing together and, and really make it real world and, uh, and daily walk past um, communication tonight. So I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Appreciate you, ST. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Good night. Good night. We can read next week, Anna. You too. Bye, everybody. everybody. Thank Bye. you all. Have a good evening. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.